Hello and welcome to Flooring Models Kit View Time. Today we've got something a little bit different. Uh, what we've got down in here is Infinity Models 132nd Hell Diver. Now, you might be thinking you've seen this kit somewhere before, and that is because you have, because originally it was done by HPH. Now, with technical things that I'm not totally up with and all the rest of it, what they've done is a injection molded version of the resin kit if that makes sense, which I think is really, really clever that you can take a resin kit and then do it as an injection molding, but that's what we've done. So for all those people who are terrified of a 100% resin kit, this is really for you because you can do a bit of both. And also what they've done is they've released a lot of the more detailed parts that you would have got originally in the resin kit as aftermarket parts for this particular kit. So again, this is one of those ones where you could probably go off and do a little bit of research yourself on this to find out if the version you want to do. Do you want to do the plastic one, which perhaps you're comfortable doing with if you don't work with resin, or do you just want to go off and do the resin one? Also, there's quite a difference in price as well between the two. But again, that's personal choice up to you. So, as we can see, Infini models down in here. Uh, and like I say, it's plastic by HPH. It's totally upfront and tells you exactly what's going on with this one. See, nice bit of box art as well with a very famous and very cool hell diver. So this is brand new and sealed, as you can probably see. So we'll just cut into it here to get the old plastic off. Not often here in the UK we get kits which are plastic wrapped. I know they're a big thing obviously over in the, the States and that, but here we don't seem to see it much. So as you can see, very nice there. Running around on the box, it talks about which type of version. This is a version three, it's gonna be quite a difficult one. As you can see, you've got a QR code down there that'll probably take you off to their site, various things. Fuse large length, it's gonna be sort of 32 centimeters really, as you can see, uh, 319 parts. Give you an idea of it, a little bit down on there. And lastly, obviously your kit number for this one is, is on here somewhere. So it's kit number one. So that makes it nice and easy. So inside the box, we are greeted by, get in. there we go. We've got a very nice book. Uh, and again, that's really nice. So we've got HDW harnesses in here, a little bit of photo etch as well. So straight off the bat, that's a very welcome sight. And instead of being greeted by a box of resin, we're actually got some plastic, all right? So you can see, separately done, Actually, that looks really, really nice. And then again, we've got the sprues, we've got some engine detail, we've got the back parts as well. And it's really clever how they've gone from, as I say, what was 100% uh, resin kit to being into plastic. And so it's a really nice touch because obviously the price is quite different. That's a lovely detail in there. Look at those flaps, really, really nice. And you can see the box. So, as always, we will start down in here in the the instructions. So if I can find my way in, just in the car. Get in. This is going to go back in the bag. So we've got decals and those bits there. So if we start off with the old instructions to start with, obviously that's a bit of a correction one you can see being stuck in there. I don't know if you guys can see it on camera, but that's a sticker being put over the top. So again, we've got the parts layout. Uh, to give you an idea of exactly what's going on with all of those ones, as you can see. And then, as you might imagine, it's still not going to be any slouch on detail. So we've got the photo etch parts going down in here, and obviously we've got some film parts and various decals and that going down in here. In the bits in the white here, this is the actual seat belts, which are these which are really, really nice. I've just been using those yesterday, to be honest, on a different project. Uh, so as you can see, we've got all of that down there and all this glorious detail. We've got the bulkheads, the various areas being put in this one right the way through. As you can see, loads of good detail down in there. And again, the detail just keeps coming. What's really nice as well, you've got a detailed painting guide in here as well. That's why this does look a little bit confusing down in here, but this is actually giving the ones for decals. Obviously, they're the ones with the little uh, tabs all the way around. Uh, and then obviously you've got the paintbrush denoting the color obviously before the decal going on. So again, although it's quite busy, uh, it shows you everything you need in those instructions as well. There's the side layer as well from a different view to give you a better idea of how it goes together. Engine detail looks really nice as well. So that looks all good down in there. And again, plenty of placards and details as well showing you exactly where things are. Wing sprue. Sorry, spar going through onto the back of the actual uh, pilot's bulkhead, as you can see down in there, and all those internals are going to get sandwiched in between everything. Wing system being fitted onto this one, and again, there's a couple of things to sort of remove and replace. 
as you might imagine some of the details on this but generally all very nice and again the detail is beautiful down in here in the wheel well so you've got all the framework going in there as well so building those up there the wing sections the various things talking about down in there we've got the front cowls going on to this one all the different areas the flaps being fitted the ailerons going down and all the different parts as you can see detailed work on the gun as well that's really nice to see down in there so very nice indeed and again second set of harnesses for the gunner's position you've got all of those being fitted down in there as well so that's pretty good then we've got the tail wheel area going together and then more details going in for making up the actual gear and fitting those in there just like that we've got the prop and then we're sort of bringing it all together so all the smaller parts being added onto it here there and everywhere as you might imagine we've got those leading edge slats being fitted onto this one various details being added to the canopy and then obviously the canopy being fitted here at the back and then you're into the markings so we've got obviously with the, the checky bit on the back here as I call it down in here for the USS Essex as well 1945 over here uh, we've got the USS Randolph with the stripy tail uh, which is quite nice and then we've got the actual placard and decor sorry stencil data being fitted down on here right the way through quite a few of those but again it will liven it up and bring it really to nice so top view bottom view and sides as you might imagine and then here is some other projects that they'll be working on as well so again really nice to see those ones uh, decals themselves so just popping down in here I'm good in. There we go. look nice actually those look very nice indeed we just bring that camera down a little bit you can see those good old traditional decals look at the no steps lots of those to go on there's the actual dials for the instruments various things being fitted down in there as well so that's all really very nicely done and printed so these are the harnesses so they're by HGW highly highly recommend them and obviously it won't go without the other bit as well so that's all your buckles down in there to go along your harnesses and obviously we've got some machine belts uh, machine gun belt feed belts down in there some sights and various things on the actual little sprue uh, of PE that we got down in there or a little fret so again really nice with that again if you've never used them before trust me they are they make a massive massive difference I use them on my usual my bigger scale aircraft like 132nd and then obviously if we're using obviously at the moment I'm doing a 124th aircraft so definitely in there all right so that's really nice so if we go back to the main fuselage I can get in here. Let's put the bags. Let me get even in here. These bags are proper. Yeah. These are bags where they, they only go once. So what we're going to do, we're going to have to cut our way in, unfortunately, which is a little bit of a thing. So it's very tight to the rear. There we go. So obviously the biggest worry you've got when you go from um, a resin kit and to be honest surface detail on resin is absolutely phenomenal with HPH kits if you've ever seen them you know I've built a few of them now I've got a little bit of a stash of them over behind me as well we've seen other reviews on them so I've always wondered how it would transfer over onto technically uh, what would almost seem to be a limited run kit because you're not going to get the usual things on this you're not going to get those details like locating tabs uh, and various parts on here because the way that it's done is a little bit simplified to get them in and out of the molds and things like that being resin but again this is one of those areas where boy it doesn't disappoint as you can see beautiful details but we look on the close-up you can see we've got all this lovely raised detail down here on this actual rudder and then it goes straight into gorgeous recessed riveting right the way over this and the access panels and the various areas as you can see right the way down the fuselage catching it in the light there you are not short on detail and obviously the biggest problem that it can happen is this bit underneath here if we get the camera to play ball it normally fades out when you're on this side area but as you can see again it looks absolutely phenomenal it's very clean very crisp yes you have got little bits of flash here there and everywhere as you can see down in there but that is something we're not going to worry about also again a little bit like limited run kits that we've worked on in the past you can see that some of the tabs and that are a little bit different this is just because of the crossover but really not a problem on the inside we've got all that gorgeous detail one of the nice things to it is that we have got the odd little tab in here but you don't have a million ejector pins in this like you would get with traditional 
kit so again that frees up all that detail in there and it looks very nice it looks very sharp and by the time it's obviously been painted dry brush and get a wash over it that surface detail will look absolutely beautiful and that goes on with the wing system as well you can see all of that gorgeous detail is all just here so again it all looks a little bit clunky in that but actually by the time you get this off the sprue you'll be absolutely fine with it. So again, inside details down in here for the wheel well, obviously you've got all that ribbing gets attached to this. So that's just a basic part, but you can see there's nothing really going on on the insides uh, because you're gonna build a lot of that up, but that's really, really nice. The plastic is actually really strong plastic. We're not talking, um, I call it the sort of tinny stuff, you know, where you flick it and it makes that high pitched sort of sound. This is quite a heavy duty bordering on sort of ABS plastic, which is really nice to work with. So we've got exactly the same on the other side, as you might imagine. So I won't bother getting that one out because literally it's going to be a mirror. All right. So in the wings, again, I don't think it's actually worth trying to get these somewhat out of the bag because we're going to destroy them. So I think what we do, we'll cut down the bag. We get these in. Okay. So again, straight into it, when you see the detail, it is beautiful. Look at that. That just pops every single time. Really very nice right the way over. Down onto the tail planes as well. You can see very, very nice that wing detail. The ailerons are molded in situ, but you could run around and make that to a moving part if you wanted to. That's not really a problem. But you can see the glorious detail, and that is the really what we wanted to see and we haven't been disappointed at all so that's very very nice to see on the inside as you can see again there's no tabs and that to line up but it's you know again sometimes i think they can fight you more than go with you and then again so down in here in fact they're really strong this is a brand new blade in this and it's struggling okay down in here Again, really very, very nice indeed. So as you can see, we've got the cows looking very, very nice. Probably run down this way. Got the spinner, got that bulkhead, nice detail. Got the exhaust, it's a little bit flashy. Needs a little bit of sharpening up, deburring of that, but that's pretty straightforward. This wings bar as well, it's very nice indeed. And then again, leading edge slats, fully detailed. Again, we've got the props. Again, there's a little bit of flash around, but really, I'm not worried about that at all. That's a two minute cleanup job. And again, look at the detail on those tail planes. Really very, very nice indeed. And again, on the blind side, no problem at all. We haven't got any eject pins or anything else like that that are down in here. So that's really nice indeed. One thing you might be noticing is obviously there's no parts, numbers on anything. So that's when you use your instructions. So what you want to do is, and it, it is a nice little trick and I do it sometimes, is that you have a look down on here at this and these have got the actual part number so it tells you down around the edges here exactly what they are so you can write them with a thin sharpie on the part and it just think makes things a little bit easier but there's not a million parts in here which is nice as well so that's pretty darn good right okay so i don't think we need to get this one out because there's not really tons to see oh these have got part numbers on i stand corrected totally sorry about that but some of them definitely haven't got part numbers, others have. But you can see, really nice job down in here on all that frame. Um, the actual dive brakes as well, uh, and the flaps here at the back look absolutely beautifully done. Very, very nice indeed. Uh, we've got all the smaller parts. The guns, okay, you might want to pop in there, if I'm being honest, with something a little bit sort of aftermarket. Brass barrel set will go down there, beautiful, okay. There's those parts on the blind side, so that's good. Again, I think I'll get away with showing this through the back, trying to cut them out because it's that nice, but really nice indeed. And again, you can see these are numbered, these parts on the smaller ones. It's just the bigger sprues, which aren't gear, nice and big and beefy. So we won't have any trouble with the weight. And again, really nice parts all the way through. Yeah, okay, the only thing maybe if you wanted to be picky with this is the actual uh, sprue tab to the part can be a bit big and chunky. So it's going to be a little bit awkward. So little things like these sort of olios down in here, you need to sort of cut that out and clean it up afterwards. But a good sharp blade in there shouldn't really be a problem. But again, very nice all the way through. Nice. And then we've got this guy, which we will get at, so we can have a bit more of a detailed look at. Okay, 
it they've done these bags so well you can't get in them so down in here yeah this one doesn't have the numbers on sprue f here but again if we come down this way you can see nice detail fabric detail down in here for the headrest the floor you've got uh, these are actually slightly raised rivets for the floor so they're sort of dome rivets on the floor which is really nice indeed and again we've got all the parts a little bit of flash here and there but again really very very nice so that's cool and then last up we've got the actual engine detail which we have a nice proper look at this so again So yeah, that's really very nice indeed, as you can see down in there with those engines. We've got the push props and the bits all down in here. There isn't much veining on these pots, which I thought we might see, but what it is, it is so fine, I don't think the camera's even showing it, but there is. If you catch it in there, that's beautifully fine. Literally, considering this is 132nd, that's probably to scale. Which is very rare you see that but it doesn't pick, pick it up but if you put your finger on it you can you can actually hear it so that's actually down in there so that's really very nice detail with the engine okay so last up we've actually got the clearer parts i can't rest a lot of weight in here so these i assume were off the original anyway so i don't think these are going to be anything particularly bad and yeah that's actually really very nice indeed so again good sharp strong edging on the actual framing so that's going to be easy to nicely mask up but generally you probably see down in here very nice indeed instrument panels lighting boards things like that all down in here this guy's about to fall off but as you can see how clear that is that's no problem down in there very clear so again beautifully done very nice finger test you see nice and clear through there no problems at all so that's really very nice indeed and there you have it actually i think that's really very very nice okay this isn't going to be a kit for the beginner for instance because there's some of the things in there like lining up and various bits and pieces you're going to have to do by hand but like i've said a lot of the time especially when i do limited run kits like special hobby stuff and stuff like that sometimes locating pins can work against you if you've got particularly bad lineup and things aren't going sometimes it's nicer to just get it in there yourself so you know you've got plenty of internal detail so putting things together it's going to hold itself together so it's not like you're just putting two shells together trying to get to line up it's going to go with all that internal detail the wing detail is absolutely fantastic as well surface detail inside and out is phenomenal i'm really really glad that it's uh infinity models have done this because i think infinity models have come along and really they've taken what has been probably a little bit of a, a worry for some modelers shall we say working on a solid 100 percent resin kit uh, and people worry about you know obviously gluing it together and how it goes and filling and sanding and things like that let alone painting it and there is obviously the thing about long term what happens to resin uh 25 years down the line does it warp you know i've known it it's happened to me that you know over the years the resin does deteriorate and it does start to fold and bend so a lot of people are put off by resins or certainly old resins anyway so this way infinity models now have given you the option to technically build what was a fantastic legend of a resin kit in styrene uh, and i think that's absolutely fantastic we said before there isn't the full detail in there that you would get with the actual resin kit but you can buy them as aftermarket so i think you can get detailed cockpit areas detailed wheel wells um you know bombay sorry uh, and things like that as well and they're sort of an aftermarket thing so if you wanted to add resin into this you've still got all those options as well and that's what's really really nice about this one so if you do want a big 132nd scale hell diver that's definitely going to have to be one of those kits that's right up there to build so anyway, that's the Infinity Models 132nd uh, SB2C-4 Helldiver.